welcome back to my channel. So for today's video I'm just going to do a little like podcasty type video. Now if you are new to my channel you might not know but I did do a podcast video quite a long time ago now um, but I really enjoyed filming it, you really enjoyed watching it and so I wanted to create another one. Um, I have been listening to so many so many podcasts recently like on my way to college, while I'm working, anything I'm just always listening to podcasts so I thought I would you know come come join the uh, podcast thing. <laughs> I've made a list of a few um, topics that I want to talk about um, so I'm just going to go through it and just chat. Um, I hope you enjoy it. This is something that you can put in the background whether you're like cleaning your room, working, anything. Um, just something that you can put in the background. Um, so yeah I hope you enjoy. <laughs> um, also this is going to be very as much unedited as I possibly can make it so it might be quite long again. Apologies. Um, so the first thing that I want to talk about is changes in creativity. So this podcast is going to be called something similar to being a creative in a world of creatives. Um, now what that, that to me means is the fact that there are so many people who are doing a similar thing to you nowadays. Um, there's, pe there's so many people on YouTube, for example, there's so many people in the industry that I'm going into, which is media, um, and there is just so many people doing creative things, um, more so than like a few years ago, um, it just keeps growing. So I just want to talk about how you kind of find your place, I guess, um, because I think it's quite difficult to find a place where you fit in, especially in such a creative world where there's so much competition. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to talk about that. <laughs> um, so if you might know, um, but about a year ago, my channel was solely focused around revision. Um, this wasn't really very intentional, it kind of just happened. Um, but I enjoyed making those videos at the time, um, and I look back at them now and I really don't like them. But um, I grew from that, I improved my creative process, and I'm now creating content that I really am very passionate about. Um, so my current Get Productive With Me's or my current videos that have quite a motivational message behind them um, are inspired by the videos that I did a year ago but are now of a much better standard in my opinion. Um, so yeah, I have grown on my channel um, and I just want to come and talk about that. So on my channel I am planning on creating much more like motivational content, very realistic content. I don't want my channel to be one of those ones where you just look at and you just feel bad about yourself after watching a video. I want it to be the complete opposite of that. Um, I'm almost, almost in a way like how I feel after listening to a podcast. Um, I will talk at the end of this video about a few of my favourite podcasts recently, um, in case any of you want to know. Um, so yeah, just stay tuned for that. But I... I think, to be fair, um, living in a world where there's so much creativity and there's so much passion in different areas is very difficult, um, but it's also very inspiring in some ways too. Um, the amount of people I look up to and I kind of just, I look at and I'm like, I love your creativity, how could I incorporate a message that you put into your work into my own? Um, but again, it's like that that kind of between stage of copying someone or creating your own work um, and I feel like I've kind of got to the stage where I'm creating my own work, I'm creating what I really love to create, um, whether that's on YouTube, whether that's at college, whether that's in other areas of my life um, and I'm just becoming a better version of myself as um, the days continue. I'm going to talk a bit about YouTube culture within this podcast as well just because it's something that I have more experience in than other areas. Um, not saying that I've been here for ages because I haven't, <laughs> um, but just talking about it. Um, so for example, on YouTube there is um, a bit where you can categorise your videos, whether they are comedy, entertainment, um, how to in style, like beauty, there's um, like categories in the videos. And um, to me, I see that as a restriction. Um, of creativity because you're putting yourself in a box and you don't allow, to allow yourself to do anything different. So for example there's certain channels that just do beauty or just do fashion which is great if that's the content that they want to be creating however if it's not then that's where there's like a slight like oh that kind of sucks um, because when you, once you paint yourself um, or your channel as a certain thing whether that's beauty or entertainment or comedy 
um, whenever people come back to your channel, that's what they're expecting. Um, so for me, last year, I kind of accidentally painted my channel as a, um, a very, very steady and academic based channel, which I have nothing against. Some of the best people I know now have um, very steady based channels. And um, I really enjoy watching these videos. I honestly couldn't have got through my exams without watching some of my friends' videos. Um, however, it's now kind of restricted me on what I can create. Um, purely because if you're making art on YouTube, um, there is that kind of between stage of making what you want to want to create and also people seeing it. Um, and I feel like I'm in that in-between stage at the moment because I'm not too sure whether the content I'm creating is what my current viewers want to see. Um, however, I, I've decided, I've kind of got into a mindset that if I don't create the content I want to be creating, I'll be gaining the wrong audience. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create my content that I'm really passionate about. Um, I'm adding cinematography into my content. Um, if you haven't seen my recent videos, I'd recommend going and watching them. Like if, you're, if you've seen my old videos and you just stumbled across this video, please go and watch my new content. Um, I work very, very hard on it and it's something completely different to how I film my old videos. Um, and I would hope it's more improved. Um, fingers crossed anyway. But, um, but yeah, so I have decided that I'm just going to continue. Um, creating what I want to create and not put myself into a box of I'm a this channel or a that channel um, purely because I feel like creativity is such it's so like what's the word <laughs> so like differentiable I don't think that's a word <laughs> oh gosh English GCC taught me well um, anyway it's so like different for every person is what I'm basically trying to say so one person's creativity could be in academia, whereas other person's creativity could be in like the arts and photography. Um, and I think it's very important to see that creative creativity comes in more than one form. Um, it's not just an art a piece of like art you see on the wall. It's like it's everything. Like, everything you look around and you see is art and it's creativity. Um, whether that's like a graphic design piece or whether that's like a building or like I don't know medicine you pick up like anything and everything in this world is created by someone. Um, so therefore there are a lot of creatives. Everything you look at or you see or you watch has an influence on your own creativity. So for example, a year ago, I wasn't really watching many filmmakers. I was watching a few, but I was like, mm, I'm not too sure whether these are my style. Um, and over the past year, I have grown to find, find some incredible filmmakers, um, both on the YouTube platform and elsewhere um, and I've kept up with it and I've watched all of their videos all of their short films and I've began to find a style that I really really like um, of which is not someone else's style which I think is also a very important thing in creativity because if you're watching someone and you decide to kind of copy them that's where creativity kind of overlaps like it doesn't it's no longer creativity if you're copying somebody else. Um, and I'm not saying like don't take inspiration because I think everything we see or view as human beings is taken into us as inspiration. So I could see something that's like a certain colour and be like, okay, I really like that colour, I'll use that in my video. But that doesn't mean that I've copied that, if you get me. <laughs> um, I think it's taking something and making it into something you are proud of and you are passionate about. Um, whether that is within the arts, within the media industry, or whether that is in another industry. Just checking I'm still recording. Yes, I am. <laughs> um, so yeah, basically I I think it's really important to share your art with the world. Um, personally, I think art isn't art until it's shared. Um, so for example, like, I don't know, think of like famous artists, you would never have seen their work and never have seen their creativity and their passion for what they love unless they decided to share it with the world. Um, and I think that's why there's so much competition because everybody's trying to share their own art, whatever form that takes. Um, and like on my channel, I do like quite 
I, I have like Spotify playlist videos because I think it's important to share art in different forms. Um, music is a huge, huge part of my life, um, as well as like English, writing. Um, I write a lot of the time. Um, I draw like I, there's a lot of things that perhaps I haven't portrayed on my channel before. Um, but I also am going to try and include um, because I think it's important to share the full picture online. But yeah, I haven't made this podcast very scripted at all. Like I've literally just come in and chatting. <laughs> I'm not really too sure what this is going to turn out like, but you'll see. Um, yeah, also I say I'm a lot. Sorry if that annoys you. It's just part of my personality. <laughs> um, oh my gosh. <laughs> so with... I think in the creative industries, it's very, very difficult to get your name out there purely because there's always there's always someone doing a similar thing to you, whether that's in filmmaking, photography, like art, singing, dancing, etc. Um, there's always going to be someone who's doing something very similar, and that is why you have to find something that nobody else is doing. Um, so for me, I have found a way of filming and editing my videos that, from my knowledge, I've not seen anybody else do on YouTube. Um, and for example, like other YouTubers, so like Emma Chamberlain and um, like Jenna and like all of the kind of comedy YouTubers as well, if you're going to put them in a the box, um, they have done something different with their channels. So Emma's editing and like everything is so different. There's something for certain channels, they have very much come up with a unique idea that nobody else had come up with before and put it into their videos and people like things that are people like watching what people love to make and I think that's the most important thing like if you if you're creating content that you don't like to create um, you're not going to build the right audience whether that content is amazing and will get views and will get subscribers um, if you're not truly passionate about it you're creating the wrong content um, and I think that's kind of what I've realized over the past few months is that Content 100% comes before like quality because if I quantity even <laughs> that made so much sense. I think what I've realised is quality it comes before quantity a lot. So I'm filming this on a college night and I this is just a chill. I'm just chilling and chatting, <laughs> um, but I'm enjoying it and I think that's the most important thing. If I was if I was sat here not enjoying it, you'd be able to tell. Believe me. Um, so. Yeah, I, I think it's quite difficult to explain art um, because there's so many different, like everybody sees different things as art. So for me, I see um, like transitions in TV shows and scripts and like cinematography, videography, singing, like I see that as all different types of art. Um, because realistically, everything we see is art. Like the world would be absolutely nothing without art um, and without like, the whole like creation process, whether that's like engineering, art, etc. Um, but I think it's it's really important to have like an outlook on life where you're you're like wow, like we would not be here without art. <laughs> like it's weird to think about, but it's also very very true. Um, and I think that's why it's so important to make sure you're creating the content you love because somebody out there will love that content and will love what you're doing, and that could really mean a lot to somebody so if if I get a comment on my video saying like this made my day I really really love your editing um that means so much to me because I work so hard on my editing I work so hard on like producing videos in general like it's taken me 20 minutes to try and get this angle right and it's still not right I still would try and make it perfect in other ways um but that's the best I've done. <laughs> um, in YouTube culture, it's very difficult to find your place or find your certain genre, if you like, because I don't think I fit into a genre. Um, if you're going to put me in a box, I'm not sure what, what you put me in. <laughs> um, because I I don't want to be like, oh, I'm this YouTuber, because that automatically restricts my creativity, whether I see it like that or not. Um, so, for example, if, like, Emma Chamberlain came out with a beauty video and it wasn't a joke, people would take it as a joke whether it was or not. Um, and I think that's kind of the only thing about creating a channel that fits to a certain genre. But then it also is very important to fit a genre, so it's quite difficult. Um, 
so yeah, I'm, I'm just living my best life, trying to create the best content I can. Um, but yeah, so I think it's very difficult to be a creative um, in this world today because there's so many there's so many incredibly talented people and there's so many ways to put your talent out there now. Um, if 10 years ago there wasn't, it, it was not easy to put your talent online. Um, whereas now you literally click a button, it's online and somebody could see that and it could go viral. Um, so it's, it's kind of that mix between, oh, like I enjoy this, this is my art and also am I really doing this just for the sake of doing it? But it's, it's, all, it's very difficult because there is so much content constantly being uploaded to the internet that when, when you go and try and share your art, it's not always instant that people see it. Um, and some people might not even see it at all. And that's really, really sad when you think, oh, well, that this person is very, very talented and their work just isn't getting noticed. Um, and I know a lot of people who have quite small channels on YouTube but are incredibly talented and deserve a lot more but at the same time their their channels and their work is so much more important than their presence online um, and the, the content they're making is absolutely incredible um, so yeah I, I think it's very important to not only create art that you're passionate about but also share art that you're passionate about which is why I'm going to talk about like my favorite um, podcast and also a few of my favorite YouTubers maybe too um, at the end of this so yeah. Okay so I another thing that I do want to talk about is how to kind of find your style um, because I feel like I've kind of almost found my style at least for right now um, because art is constantly evolving everything you do is evolving. If you look at a video from me a month ago and I my videos are completely different now um, and a month ago, I wouldn't have thought of that. I'd have been like, oh yeah, my video would be very, very similar next month, you know. Um, but it's not. It's very different. And um, so it's finding something that you're truly, truly passionate about. So if you really, really like helping people um, academically, or if you really, really like helping people with advice or um, mental health related videos or singing, um, it's about sharing that passion online. Because if you're if you're creating videos online for the sake of creating a video, you're like, oh, I've seen this person do it and they've done really well for themselves, so I'm going to do it too. Um, that's not the right mindset to have, especially on such a huge platform like YouTube. Um, because I think now you can really, really see through people, um, especially like um, people who are trying to fit a certain genre. Um, and this is no like shade <laughs> at all. Um, I'm not that type of girl. I would I don't throw shade. Um, but yeah, I I would say go and try and find inspiration from other places. Whether that is on YouTube, which is one a very very good place to find inspiration because YouTube has some incredible people on it, and it's insane to see so much talent on one platform. However, there are other platforms, um, for, for example, like Spotify for music and podcasts, um, as Instagram as well. There is a lot of people on Instagram who share their talent, whether that's, like, there's a lot of people who do, like, makeup and um, other forms of art on Instagram as well. Um, animation, there is so much art in the world, and it's so, sometimes it's very, very difficult to find it. Um, but you do really put in the time, put in the effort to go and find it, because it's so important, so important. So... Yeah, I would just say go and find inspiration from other people, whether that's people in the class next to you, whether it's people online, um, just people like walking around in daily lives. What I like to do is, um, if I'm in a place where I feel particularly creative, most of the time when I'm down in London, um, I do not live in London, but I do travel down there quite regularly. Um, when I'm in London, I walk around and I am instantly inspired. Not uh, like. It was weird how a place can inspire you as well as certain people or certain things you see online. Um, I walk around and I see different things and I'm like, wow, that's so cool. Like, I really like that concept. Or you look up and you see an advert and you're like, wow, like that transition is amazing. At least I see that anyway. Not like that, but <laughs> um, obviously everybody's got a different opinion. Um, but I really like certain forms of art. Other people like other forms of art. And that's okay. Um, art, is, art isn't there to please everybody. Art is there to please the ones that like it, 
and if people don't like it there's plenty of more out in the world. But yeah developing your own style is always very very difficult um, as I've said there are a lot of people with their own styles already developed and there's always going to be someone who's very very similar to you um, which is very very hard to think of because you're like oh my god I've come up with a really like unique idea um, nobody has thought of this idea before realistically Someone probably has, um, whether that's online, whether that's wherever, before. I can't remember actually who said it to me, but somebody said like nothing is original in this world. And that really has stuck with me because it really isn't. Um, like everything that like, you see on YouTube, yeah, okay, there's like people thinking of different like 24 hour videos, etc. But there's nothing original, like very original. Because we take inspiration, even if it's subconsciously, from other people all the time. Um, so our experiences and how we live our lives all come together to form who we are and I wouldn't have the things I have without watching certain interviews that celebs have done or watching um, Emma Watson's speech on feminism or watching TED talks, I don't know, um, or watching Jeremy Kyle or any other things like that. I wouldn't have the interest I have in media if I hadn't watched TV growing up. Um, so it's finding like, there's so many things that come together to form your interest, to form what you're passionate about and what you love. All of that eventually leads into your own creative process and your own art. Um, so finding your art is very, very hard, but very, very worth it. Because once you've found something that you think is quite unique to, your, to you, or you come up with things that you, you would perceive to be quite unique, um, then you're alright. <laughs> I, as I said, I haven't written any guidance for this podcast episode. I've literally written being a creative in a world of creators for this one part that I'm talking about now. So, um, I'm just kind of talking a lot. Um, I don't believe you can teach art. Um, and I get like, yes, I'm going to college to te be taught art. Um, I think you can be taught skills, but I don't think you can be taught art. Um, art is something that you either have, I would say, or you don't. Um, which is very harsh, <laughs> um, but I think everybody has an element of creativity, um, no matter where that is. Um, but to form that creativity into actual art um, takes a lot of talent. And um, yeah, so I think you have to, I don't think you can be taught talent, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Um, and as much as you can like improve your skills on something, to improve your skills on something, you must have had talent there in the first place, if you get me. I don't know. And again, this talent comes from what, you, what you've seen, what you've experienced, what you've done in your life. Um, yeah, I don't really know what I'm trying to say here. I am kind of going to stop talking about that, just purely because I feel like I've talked about the same thing over and over again. Um, but as I said, I'm going to try and keep this quite unedited, so if I repeat it myself, my apologies, but I hope you're doing well. I hope you're having a good day. Um, so yeah, um, the next thing I'm going to talk about is my favourite creatives and the importance of sharing other people's work. Um, so I will talk about um, creatives in a second that I've been loving. Um, but I think it's very important to share other people's work because some people don't get the exposure that they deserve. Um, and I think it's just very important to, if you are a creative, to share other creatives works especially ones that you've been inspired by um so for me i've been spreading like podcasts that i've been loving on my instagram story on my twitter um kind of just spreading it whether it's in, in person or online um just sharing creativity because creativity and art is so so important especially in modern society because everything we see is art fashion um graphic design like drawing every single thing is art even like youtube um, is a form of art everything everything's art <laughs> um basically so sharing things you've been loving sharing people you've been inspired by things you've been inspired by even um is very important um because realistically it builds up our society more it creates more interest and it creates more creativity um and creativity is literally the most important thing like if there wasn't any creativity in the world nothing would happen <laughs> at all. So, right, I'm going to just talk you through a few of my favourite podcasts. I'm just going to get out my Spotify. Um, my Spotify is Normandy if you want to follow me. 
great time over there. So yeah, I'm going to just briefly say a few podcasts I've been loving and just like a brief little, I'll probably read their little description. Um, so the first podcast that I've been loving and I have mentioned it quite a few times in my videos is The Ground Up Show by Matt Diavella. Um, he does do YouTube, um, an amazing YouTuber, um, and he also has a documentary called Minimalism on, um, on Netflix, which, again, incredible. Um, but this is um, a podcast... Okay, I'm going to read the little like description just so I don't get anything wrong. So it says, The Ground Up Show is a podcast that inspires creatives to make meaningful content and pursue their passions. Award-winning filmmaker Matt Diavella, best known for the de- Netflix documentary Minimalism, sits down with creators to talk about their process, the lessons they've learned, and how to make an impact. Um, I think that description perfectly like wraps up the podcast. Um, as I said, I love this podcast um it it's so inspirational and it just gives you that kind of push to go for what you want um and to to kind of have that inspiration from other people who um you hear like people's stories and how they've got to where they've got to and what they've been through what like etc and i just think it's very inspiring so i would write, highly recommend that to anyone who is in the create or is looking into going into the creative industries such as like media, um, music, etc. The next podcast is Off Menu with Ed Gamble and James A. Caster. This is a comedy podcast. Um, definitely, can I just say, probably not the one to watch on your bus to college because you end up laughing out loud and it's very embarrassing. Um, it's happened multiple times to me. Um, so I'm going to read the little description. Comedians Ed Gamble and James A. Caster invite special guests into their magical restaurant to each choose their favourite starter, main course, side dish, dessert and drink. Ever wanted to eat your dream meal? It's time to order off menu. So, basically, um, James A. Caster acts like a genie. You can order your favourite. It's really, really interesting. It's like stories as well. Like, it's very... not stories. Like, people just talk about their life and what they've experienced and, like, why they chose certain things and, like, it's just so interesting. Um, but also very, very funny, um, as they're, they're both comedians, and I just love them both. Um, so I would recommend that one. The next podcast is the Colin and Samir podcast. So the description of this podcast says, Colin and Samir are YouTubers and entrepreneurs based in downtown Los Angeles. They found success on YouTube with their first project, the Lacrosse Pro- Lacrosse Network, a popular media destination for the sport of lacrosse. After the network sold in 2014 to New York-based Whistle Sports, they worked with brands like Nike, Under Armour, Matria, Gatorade and New Balance developing branded content campaigns for YouTube. Um, and basically they just kind of talk about like positive things. Like I really just enjoy their podcast. Um, anyway, that's literally all I have to say for that one, but I, I've, I'm very new to listen to that podcast. So I haven't really listened to that podcast that much, but the ones I've listened to are really, really interesting. Next up, we have I Love You So Much with Kenzie Elizabeth. Um, now, Kenzie Elizabeth is a YouTuber, um, and I adore her videos. Like, she is so talented, and um, I'm just putting it out there. Love her channel. Um, so, this is the description. Welcome to the Kenzie Elizabeth podcast, hosted by lifestyle blogger Kenzie Elizabeth. On this show, you'll find interviews with influencers, artists, authors, experts, entrepreneurs, bloggers, and thought leaders. This podcast serves as a guide to branding, relationships, productivity, mental health, and overall living the best life possible. Um, I genuinely love this podcast. Um, I'm not just saying that. I genuinely, like, I listen to it, and it's just so inspiring. And to hear some of, like, my favourite creators um, talk about experiences they've gone through or what they've learned in life, it's just so important, and I, I really enjoy that. So the last podcast I'm going to talk about is, of course, The Wooden Spoon um, by Jade Ruby, Eve and Jack. Um, honestly, I love this podcast. The description here says, four high achieving students redefine what it's meant... Oh my god, I can't... English, this is not good for advertising this podcast, I apologise. Um, four high achieving students redefine what it means to be successful beyond the books. Traditionally, a wooden spoon is given to the person who comes last in a race. Instead of lingering on the failure of coming last, that same wooden spoon can be put to work to become something useful. The Wooden Spoon is a podcast about success, but most importantly, what success really looks like after you finish school and take on the real world. It's no longer defined by a grade. It's about living a successful life that is unique to you. I absolutely love that podcast. I genuinely have I've listened to it the few episodes so far and I'm so proud they're doing so well for themselves and I just 
I'm just a proud friend, but um, would highly recommend. Also, by the way, all these podcasts will be linked in the description box if you want to go and check them out. Um, I, again, as I said, would recommend them. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much, I think, all I have to say for this podcast, which is probably for the best because I've been recording for almost 40 minutes. <laughs> I am going to be doing like a separate video on a few of my favourite like YouTubers, etc. just because this video is very, very long. And I also want to like just explore a bit more on the YouTube platform and find some people that I really do think deserve more credit. Um, anyway. I am going to end this podcast here, so I really hope you've enjoyed it. It's, as I said, very different to what I usually post on this channel, but I have done one before. Let me know if you would like to see more podcast type videos and what topics you would like me to cover. Um, I have a few lined up. Um, I have one about mental health, one about confidence and how to stay positive um, and things, things that are very important and I think everybody needs to hear. Um, but if there's anything on a specific topic that you would like to hear or know about, um, please comment in the description box and I will do my best to research, find different things and come up with a good podcast episode for next time. Um, anyway, I hope you all have an amazing week and follow my socials if you would like to find out more about me. <laughs> um, anyway, subscribe if you're new and I will see you very soon with another video. Bye! <laughs>